no one ever thought this day would come. Ten years ago today, Najib Razak, bold and black-haired, proudly took oath as Malaysia's sixth prime minister. Today, he sat in the defendant's dock in court, a common criminal. His hair now snowy white. By the Malaysian Insight, this is The People vs. Najib Razak. Follow us into the courtroom where it all happens. I'm Patrick Teo. April 3rd, 2019. Najib Razak's trial finally begins after several delays. The former Prime Minister is charged with money laundering in connection with SRC International, a subsidiary of One Malaysia Development Syndrome Burhad, or 1MDB. 1MDB, as you may or may not have heard, has been touted as the, quote, heist of the century, unquote. Originally a strategic investment fund started to benefit the people of Malaysia, it soon turned into a complex web of financial transactions involving multiple offshore accounts, shell companies and a fugitive businessman. In this trial, Najib is accused of receiving funds amounting to 42 million ringgit into his personal accounts from SRC International between December 2014 and early 2015. All this while, he has strongly denied his involvement in the case. He says he has been wrongfully accused and is a victim of a political witch hunt. He has taken to social media to proclaim his innocence and even released a ballad to rally support just weeks earlier. More recently, he has gotten chummy with street biker groups, turning him into an even bigger internet sensation. Najib arrived in court at 1.50pm dressed in a striped navy blue suit and a patterned tie in a lighter shade of blue. He was accompanied by his son, Ashman Najib. Some 20 supporters gathered around his car and chants of Hidup Najib can be heard. As he paused for a moment of prayer, he looked stoic, but not nervous. In the courtroom on the fifth floor, he sat in the dock alone, with only a yellow pillow as company for his back. He was relaxed, staring at his mobile phone, as his defense team tried to argue for another postponement. This particular trial involves just seven of 39 charges leveled against him. Apart from Najib, let's look at the key players in this case. On the defense team, Najib has appointed Shafi Abdullah, a prominent lawyer who has defended many UMNO members. Ironically, he is facing similar charges of his own, money laundering and tax evasion of 9.5 million ringgit. On the other side, Attorney General Tommy Thomas leads the prosecution. Hearing the case is Justice Mohammad Nazlan Mohammad Ghazali, who is also hearing Najib's abuse of power and criminal breach of trust case. As the trial continues, more figures will emerge. <laughs> Back in the courtroom, the lawyers were arguing. Najib's lawyers first tried to file a motion to postpone the trial yet again, saying that the charges that were made are, quote, bad, unquote, due to certain amendments that were made. The prosecution countered and said they have had time since August last year to contest the charges and added that this was merely a tactic to delay the trial. This goes on for about 40 minutes. Finally, the judge makes his decision. In my view, there is no impediment to this application being heard after commencement of trial. So trial is to commence now. So, trial will go on as scheduled. 
At about 2:50 p.m., the clerk read out the charges. It took her nine minutes, and Najib pleaded not guilty to all of them. Once the charges were read, Najib sat down without any expression, and even looked bored. Occasionally, he looked around the gallery, filled to the rafters with reporters furiously typing their stories. Let's hear from Yvonne and Ray, our producers. Yvonne was in court. Yeah. You know, Najib has this signature pose where he kind of slumps uh, to one side and his head will be cocked to one to one side. So he he was sitting like that, like mm-hmm. very relaxed. Mm-hmm. Did not look worried. Did not look scared. Um, yeah, it was as as if just. You know, another day at any other event. <laughs> oh, wow! So there was no hint yeah. that he was worried at all. No, not at all. I mean, it wasn't just him actually. Uh, his son was also in court, in the open court, seated be- right behind him, mm-hmm. and uh, both of them were just. It was like you know, no care in the world, just expressionless, just sitting there. Taking the witness stand first is Muhammad Akmaluddin Abdullah. The 35-year-old is the assistant registrar of the company's commission of Malaysia. He nervously read out his statement containing details from documents filed during the registration of SRC, occasionally fumbling over names and difficult words. While he was rattling away names and dates for forty minutes, Najib sat in his signature slouch, his head tilted to one side and then the other, as he watched the testimony. Occasionally, he looked down, presumably at his mobile phone. The hearing dragged on, and Najib continued to slouch further and further into his chair. Meanwhile, outside at the lobby, a supporter of Najib began causing a ruckus. Unlike other times when Najib went to court, his usually large group of supporters were absent. And, and these supporters that we spoke to today, they said that it was due to some being swayed by false accusations or in Malay Makasitna, while others who were civil servants were being barred from attending. This was what they claimed. Right. And then, yeah, and then they, they, also, they also said that we have to take care, uh, they also have to take care of their rifle. They have to, you know, they can't just uh, leave and, and go 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 and support the uh, Najib and, mm. and, and at the risk of losing their job. The CCM official finished his testimony at the witness stand. Then came the discussion about the dates for the next hearing. After much back and forth between the prosecution and defence, Justice Mohammad Nazlan Mohammad Ghazali fixed the next trial dates and proceedings ended at 5.35 p.m. He, but after the point that Shafi was arguing about the date for subsequent uh, trial dates, mm-hmm. that was when Shafi was the most animated, <laughs> actually. <Yeah. laughs> the trial will continue on April 15th to May 10th. With a smile on his face, Najib exited the courthouse. He shook hands and waved at his supporters, before being driven away in a black sedan. He was a much more relaxed and relieved Najib than the one who had entered earlier today. I'm Patrick Teo. Tune in again on April 15th, barring any changes, for the next episode in this saga. The People vs. Najib Razak is brought to you by The Malaysian Insight. This podcast is produced, written and mixed by Revati Supramaniam with help from Yap Pek Kwan. Yvonne Lim is our correspondent in court. Other recordings from the court are by Ravin Palinasami, Jeremy Singh, Hasmiza Hassan and our intern Damon Tan.